I'm now asking myself why I do a thing. We are the ones that can provide the solution to the problem. I'm having a blast. Hello and welcome to One on One. I'm Dan Milliken. We've recorded this at Air Venture. It's always a blast to be here. And it's always a blast to have you, Mark. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks, Dan. I enjoy it. Yeah, we had a pretty good one on one back at Sun and Fun. And, um, uh, yeah, out of this world, that one. That one was out of this world, is one of my favorites. Um, I learned a lot about what not to do on thumbnails, by the way, but we won't get into that. That's the worst response I've ever gotten. But, and it's my bad. But anyway, we won't get into that. Um, let's, first of all, you look great. And, and I meant to say that six Thank months you. ago. But you have, uh, what are you doing? Um, you know, after the, the health issue, the kind of near-death experience, uh, you suddenly realize, like, this is the only avatar we get to live in for this life, and you got to take care of it. you got to respect it. So I, uh, intermittent fasting is what's been working for me. I've, I've dropped the weight. I've gotten stronger. I feel younger and healthier, and I've maintaining it now for quite some time, and I find it easy. So I, I guess for me... Intermittent fasting. There's no okay. special secret. I don't sell anything. I don't buy any pills. It's just I skip breakfast and I try to watch what I eat. All right. How does your intermittent fasting program work? Because I, I got a friend who was doing it some. But w what what are the – do you, like, eat at certain times? <laughs> okay. So, I mean, there's a lot of books. There's right. a lot you can study. I'm simple. Like, if okay. it's not stupid simple, I'm too stupid to do it. All right. So – um, all I do is I stop eating at seven or eight at night and okay. I'm not a hard rule, but seven's the goal, but by eight o'clock I'm just done. And then I don't eat until noon. My target weight for me, I sat at 200 pounds for the last 25 years and I just said, I want to be 175. Uh -huh. And so my rule's easy. If I'm 176, instead of not eating till 12, I don't eat till one. Every day I get on the scale first thing in the morning. And if I'm 177, I don't. I, I, I have to wait till two. If I'm 178, I have to wait till three. And that regulates me back to 175. If I get under 175, I eat breakfast. Okay. And that's 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 it. It's it's not complicated. I don't count calories. I don't right. do anything. I just say stop eating at seven, eight, and don't eat till noon. And it's easy. That and. And I stay right at 173 to 178 with no effort. Do you find so, yourself hungry in no. the mornings or in the night? I did for two weeks. It was very difficult. Three weeks, it started to get easy. And now it's been a year later, a year and several weeks later. I've never broke 180 again. And I, I have several times gotten under 170. And I have to say, okay, I keep dropping the weight. I got to, like, eat ice cream and go out for a big steak dinner and potatoes. But uh, just by stepping on the scale every day, let that determine when I get to eat in the afternoon. And it's no effort. And I actually, I would say I have way more energy than every. I get out of oh, bed really? excited, full of energy, pumped. And there's some times where when it comes time to eat at lunch, I'm like, I don't want to eat because I get lethargic. And so I'm like, okay, if I eat a big meal, I'm going to get exhausted. And so I just eat something light. Wow. Okay. All right. That's that's really interesting. I've Dieting been... at Oshkosh. Yeah, uh, well, it's with no rules, my books, channel is tapes, or pills by my, Mark Patey. My channel is called Taking Off, so we're talking about taking off weight. Okay, yeah, I get um, it. And and you know, aviation, there's weight and balance, and our planes yeah. can only lift so much. So if we can pull 25, 30 pounds out for good, well, that's worth some money. Well, and being healthy on the, in the cockpit is a big deal. It makes well, you a better pilot. I tell you, that's for me the biggest benefit. And. And I always felt like I looked good at 200, but I knew 175 is where I should be yeah. at 510. And um, boy, my mind is more clear and sharp and aware than it has been in years. And I think eating healthy and taking care of yourself, that's a huge part of that, of course. Okay, well, it's absolutely, you're getting results. It's very clear to yeah. anybody who's been around you. So, All right, All right let's, let's talk about best... Uh, best aviation products and best tugs. You've got a new product. Tell me about that. Well, uh, yeah, uh, we try every year at Oshkosh to unveil at least one thing new, and we've been able to do that now. This is our ninth year. And, um, you know, in the past, we brought out our smaller GPUs, which I think a lot of people said, wow, you're doing, um, you know, power supplies, portable units. And, of course, with our tugs now going into the commercial space with our Sierra tugs, which are now shipping, um, the obvious progression was a big commercial diesel uh, GPU. So it's a diesel liquid-cooled wow. GPU for starting big jets, 300 amps continuous, uh, 2,000 amps for starting. So you can run all your ACs on a big airplane and let it sit out on the ramp. 
We got twice the fuel of our competitors. Um, we have storage boxes they don't have. And then we also said, like, if we're going to build the GPU, I one time landed it. Uh, we got to do something to say we got to live up to the brand. It can't just be another GPU that runs your ACs or starts right. your big jet. So I said, let's make it a best aviation products. And I had landed one night, and I was trying to beat a bad storm in, and I did. It was no problem. I landed, you know, ahead of the storm. It was coming in. I had a good 30 minutes. As I cleared the runway, the airport went dark. And that wasn't a big deal. I pulled up to the hangar, and I'm like, okay, how do I get my hangar open? I'll figure it out. Maybe I can borrow a generator. But then it started hailing. Oh, my And when God. you're sitting there with a $4 million airplane, and the hail just starts bouncing off, and the hail's uh. getting bigger and bigger, and there's nothing you can do. And I'm like, I'm like I, what am, how did I get here? How did I get here unprepared? Wow. And so our GPU has the largest inverters. Um, some other products will have inverters that you can plug in 110, like to run a spotlight or charge your Milwaukee drill. Ours has 220 volt output, enough power to open a large hangar door, and then we built it so it can be plugged into your hangar as a standby power. It has massive battery, so it's a hybrid GPU. It's not just the diesel generator, but you've got massive battery banks inside too. So if the power goes out, you can still ditch, dispatch your airplane, still get life light out, or in this case, get your plane out of the weather and close the door. And so we call this new product our hybrid dispatch GPU. Okay. And what's fun is we just launched this, and I just got out of uh, our home in Texas where our property was shut down right. without power for two weeks. With the hurricane, yeah. And, and, and I'm like, this is just another example where it seems every year in Texas we have these power outages from the storms, and we shouldn't be sitting there watching the water come up around our landing gear and just hoping it's going to be okay. And with dispatch, you're going to dispatch and you're just going to boogie out of town and, uh, and then probably let your GPU wander around everybody else's hangars and open them up too. But the other thing we've done is we also made it self-driven. So you can tow it behind a golf cart if you're an FBO and you got to go long distances. But a lot of people might just have their own corporate hangar with a few jets in it. They don't want to hook up a golf cart and take that time, drag it around. So ours has the option to just pull the handle down like any of our tugs, roll on the throttle. It's got a big electric motor in there. It's real fast, and you walk it to the airplane. You don't have to drag it or tow it. It's a lot safer. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot more convenient. So those are just a few of the things that makes it the best in the <laughs> GPU line of products. What happened to the plane? Did it get hail damage? No. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so. No. I mean, I've never seen hail bounce so high and lot leave a dent. I, I think I Was aged. it your Pilatus? It was the Pilatus. It was Perry, yeah. And it was, it was yeah, it was, I have had a hard time watching, and I couldn't look away. Like, it was watching a train wreck in slow motion for 30 minutes. But, yeah, no damage. I've, I've had my plane out, out, out in a hail storm and had hail damage. And then um, we were coming back from Sun and Fun a year and a half ago, yeah. and we landed in a short of a storm, kind of what you're doing, yeah. and we thought it would just pass, and then a new, a harder cell um, started up right by us and was coming in, and it was everything I could do. That They uh, had one spot left for me at the FBO, and as the hail starts, we're pulling that plane in. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. No, it's high anxiety. I, yeah. Yeah, it's, I feel your pain on that. And, and and it's people like, oh, well, you have insurance. It's like, and you're also down an airplane for a long time. A long and plane time. deductibles and, and, and. It's like, no, the, the idea is protect them. Get them in the hangar or out of the hangar and out of Texas when the, when the storm comes through. Or Florida. They've, they've seen yeah, it. Right. So, yeah. So, anyway, that that's our newest is, is a, a, a new large GPU for FBOs or, or corporate hangers or life light that does more than just start your airplane. That's awesome. You guys are incredibly innovative at Best Tugs. And Thank it you. started with you because you and Mike, your engineering mind is amazing. But you've brought a team of like-minded engineers. And so uh, speak to how easy is it in this country to to come up with new products, but then manufacture them? Um, you know, it's, e ideas are easy. Right. And, um, you know, I, I tell people I am plagued with my own best ideas. Right. And my own best ideas, usually when I sit on them for a while, they're not that smart. Right. But every now and then I have like, oh, this is my best idea ever. And, and it's actually a reasonably good idea. And I pursue it. So the idea is the easy part getting a prototype's the next most difficult, but building one off of anything 
um, is pretty easy. Then to actually take that and put it into production, make it scalable, and then build it in a way that you can duplicate the quality and make a profit, it's a nightmare. I mean, it is really, really hard. And when we, we give tours of Best Hugs, you know, from time to time, and people come in, and they walk up, and um, I've, I've had uh, some people came, they own a big engineering firm, and they came in, I, I gave them a tour of our engineering department. They saw all these engineers and all yeah. these computers, and they walked around, and they're like, you have more engineers at Best Aviation Products than we do, and we're a large engineering firm. Wow. And, I, and I said, well, we, we're engineers first that happen to manufacture our own products. So, right. so Best Aviation Products is a manufacturing facility, and we're a retail company. We don't use dealers because we want to have full control, make sure the customers are buying the right tug for the airplane, the right product. Dealers sometimes can get focused on moving inventory instead of the right thing. So, um, but first and foremost, we're an engineering company with a passion for aviation that wants to then manufacture to make sure our engineering quality carries throughout. And then we sell direct to the customer so the service carries to the end. So we're a hybrid of sorts in that we don't outsource our engineering. But that's been a difficult thing. We, the it's hard, the manufacturing, and to get it from upstairs engineering and down into our prototype department, and then to get it from the prototype department, the biggest step into is into production and well, duplicatability. I listened to an interview recently with Elon Musk, and he was talking about some of the stuff at Tesla and some of the other things that he's doing. He said pretty much what you, you are. The ideas, that's the easy part. Getting it actually manufactured, that's the hard thing. It, it, it is. I, um, and we get people, a lot of times people come and say, I've got an idea and I can't do it. You guys take it for us. And I'm like... I love your idea. Right. I can't. I can't do it for you because um, the idea is the easy part, and to chase your dream means I have to give up on mine. And so we we can't we can't take pe other people's ideas. We're doing our own. But there's been I've got so many ideas in my head, so many cool new things that hopefully we'll get to bring to market. And I've made a major change at at Best Aviation Products to try to make that happen because. The company's gotten big enough. Now, we're not a huge company. We're still, you come by our booth. It's all right. my kids. I've even right. got two grandkids here. Yeah, I saw, I saw the grandkids. It's the Patey family booth, yeah. you know. And But um, but we're still 50 employees, and um, which is small. But for us, it's we're proud of it. But it's enough work that I step down as CEO to take a deep breath after my experience and say, what do I want to do? And it's not run spreadsheets and inventory and hold all the different department heads accountable. So I stepped down as CEO, I think I told you last time, yeah. to take a breath. And I've stepped into just new product development. Right. I've gone back to where my heart is, which is with the engineers, driving them nuts with my ideas, trying to tweak it, trying to change it, pushing them intellectually to think a little farther, try a little more. And that's where I'm, I'm passionate at. So, so now it's like, uh, I, I, I will still always be an owner at Best Aviation Products, but in the end, I don't run the company. I'm not even the COO. I don't do anything with finance. I'm just, I'm just in with the engineers doing what I love, and that's just come up with cool stuff and, and try to get it designed, and then I hand it over to my CEO to make sure that it goes from prototype to actually production. So the way to handle the problem of manufacturing is just to hire and hand that off to other people. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, yeah, if you can. But you know, like for example, Ranch, he's been our COO for years. And so it's been a long time for him to be with the company for, before I could put him to the CEO position and know that he can wear all the hats right. appropriately to, to manage it. But you have to. Like at the, at the level we're producing products, you, you can't do it all your own. When we started this nine years ago, it was with me and one of my sons in our garage. And I said, we'll start this little company building a smart hybrid vehicle the way we designed electric hybrid vehicles from our company Prodigy Engineering before we sold that. We said, let's make smarter tugs so that auto throttles, digital control to protect the aircraft. And we started with me and Kaysen. Oh, wow. That was the start in the garage and uh, to sit here now and, and walk in our new factory. And now we've got to build another factory. We've outgrown the one we built a few years ago. We underestimated the square footage. But That's to walk a out common now, story with you guys. We, <laughs> yeah, we, how, many, how many facilities have you now? It's like you move every two years. We have. You're right. That, yeah. And that's exactly right. Uh, every, every, the, the first we 
started out, we said, we'll move into this building, we'll sign a two-year lease, and then in a year, we had to lose the money walking away from the lease to move into a bigger building. We said, well, this building we will not grow, and we'll sign a two-year lease. And But yeah, this last one, the new factory we built, um, by the time it was done, and we built it twice as big as we thought we'd need, by the time it was finished, we needed all of it. We thought we'd build it, use half of it, lease half of it. When we moved in, we used all of it, and, and now we need another 100,000 square feet. So, But, you know, wow. this equipment's big. You know, it takes a lot of space. Oh, yeah. And when you're trying to manufacture everything in-house where you have control over it, um, you, you, you see, the more you outsource, the more you open yourself up to the skill set of somebody else's management team. And that's a challenge, and I don't, I don't say we're doing it the right way, because uh, a lot of people outsource everything and can do it well, but, but I, I really like to be hands-on. I want to walk from the engineering department, walk engineers onto the production floor and say, is this what we were thinking? And look, these guys keep busting a knuckle putting it together. How can we change it just easier for service and maintenance? And, and I like that. I, I, want, I want the engineers to have hands on the final product by walking downstairs, not flying out of state or out of country. Well, you know, you've got best products, best tugs. I will say that I think best you, power, best power. I think yeah. you also best have scrubbers. I think you have the best people. Oh, uh, because oh, thank here's, you. here's what I can say. So my landlord uh, closed the hangar door on my best tugs B5 that I bought, and. Um, Thank you, by the way. I mean, uh, thanks for being a customer. Seriously, yeah, right. it's awesome. And um, uh, it, so we closed it on it, damaged the arm and everything. I was able to reach out to your, your support team. Incredibly helpful, super nice. Oh, good. You know, and it's not like like they could have very easily just cookie cuttered it and said, okay, we've got this whole special replacement, you know, buy the whole arm, you know, for X dollars. But instead, Or buy a new tug or buy a whole or, frame. Yeah, or, he said, okay. Here's what you need, but you might be better served finding a local machine shop to, to do this or that. So they were interested not only in the bigger picture of, of making me whole. Oh, good. You know, and I I'm really so appreciate glad. it from your people. Oh, God. That makes me that, – I, I tell you that the customer support is always, for me, the number one focus. And I, I tell my staff, and, and I, I beat them to death with it. And I have from the start, and I think they're starting to understand, but I'll always tell them, take care of the customers you already have. The future customers will take care of themselves. Yeah. And um, I, I know some people think we have that backwards. It's like, you know, always be selling, always be closing, always look for ways to bring the new customer in. And I'm like, nah, you know, it, it, just take care of who you have. And, and the, the future customer takes care of himself. And, and that's worked. We do Oshkosh and we do Sun and Fun. And we answer our phone. Right. And that's it. We have no outbound sales. We, have, we spend no money on marketing. We answer the phone and we take orders. And maybe we're doing that wrong. Maybe we should actually be a little more proactive. For marketing? Um, have for you marketing. About, like, sponsoring any channels? Some channels like yeah. taking off. I've heard of those guys. They're good people. Yeah, they could be good. Yeah. I'll have to give that guy Dan a call. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so for us, I think, um, so when you say you had a great experience with our support team, it warms my heart because the support department is the thing that loses money. And right. they'd say, oh, yeah, the more time you spend, if you spend three hours on the phone with a customer that's going to order a $9 part, well, you're just crushing your bottom line and you're going to be out of business. We have thousands of products out there, and some people, when they get on the phone, they just – and you know how it is. Some people, they're like, once they get you on the phone, they won't – they just stay on the phone with me while I just quickly grab a wrench and, and put in the new switch. And it's like, ah. Uh, Okay, and I just tell our guys, stay on the phone with them if they need that. If you can say, call me back if you need yeah. it. But if they say, stay on the phone, I said, stay on the phone. And, and it's, it's been working for us. Absolutely. I think that you know, I work in marketing. You know, I have a, a video production company that we do a lot of corporate marketing. And there is no stronger marketing than satisfied customers who become referrals. Yeah. There's uh, no stronger marketing. Word of mouth. Yeah, that yeah. is the strongest you can ever do. And I, I firmly believe that. And um, as, long as, as long as I'm an owner of the company, which I don't see changing, my, right. my, my kids own the company with me, um, that's our plan. Let's take care of the customers we already have. The future customers will take care of themselves. All right. So if you're laying in bed at night dreaming up new products and, and all that kind of stuff for your team to uh, implement, 
can you can you give me a, a hint or a taste of maybe what's one of the potential new products that we might see in the horizon at best aviation products uh no <laughs> So no <laughs> scoop here. No, no scoop here. But you know, it, it, but I do, I, I do love your channel and love your show. And and you may, you you may or may not be aware of this, but you're the only one that I come on regularly to share the oh. new products with and make sure you know what's coming out. And well, I but, appreciate that. That warms my heart. So. Yeah. So uh, so I value you. I value your channel. I value the people that tune into your show. And. But the only reason I really can't say this is what's next or this is what's coming out. Because it could is, change. It changes so yeah. fast. Um, and I'll get an idea and we'll get sprinting down the road and then we'll just crash into a wall. Like, for example, Sierra Tugs. We got all the way down, got prototype out, and then bam, could not get motors. On all the software done, all, everything's ready and we couldn't get motors, couldn't get motors. Had to switch to a new supplier and then get that done and then recertify and test and all of a sudden they couldn't build them fast enough for us. And so, um, yeah, it's hard to say this is what we're working on because prototypes are easy, productions are difficult, and, and I've got too many ideas. But as they flesh out and we have a, a prototype with a plan to production that we can confidently with at least 80, 90 percent execute on, I'll call you first. All right. Is it always, or for the foreseeable future, is it always going to be aviation products? Do you do you see yourself venturing into any other industries, even if they're related? Um, it depends on how related. So to answer your first question is the easy one. Um, is it always going to be aviation products? Absolutely. We're going to okay. stay in that lane. Um, I have too many ideas on what we can improve on and do in aviation okay. to even venture left or right of that course. Our passion's aviation, and I'm, I'm going to stay in that lane, and we're going to keep our foot there on the throttle and, okay. and go there. And we have a lot of people pull, and it's, it's every day. It shows like this, and I appreciate that people love and, or trust us enough to want to share their ideas and say, you know what you could do is modify this product for this industry and modify for that. And I say, I love it, and you're right. I, I'm not going to do it. I know it's just a tweak on this to do that, but, but our lane is aviation. Aviation. Good to know. Well, Mark, it's so great catching up with you. Uh, Thank you. I know we we do have you on the show quite a bit, and um, but it's always a treat. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining us, and uh, you know, don't forget our our sponsors. Maybe one day, Best Tugs. You know, I can tell Mark. I know a guy. He can. You know, but anyway. Uh, check out 67designs, 67d.com. We've got Marshall Protective Service, mpsprotects.com, zvision, xevision.com, and Colton Mortgage. Colton taking off. We'll see you guys next time on One on One. Thank you. We are the ones that can provide the solution to the problem. I'm having a blast.